So Dave, this was really some story you did. Um, uh, I thought that this, a lot of the sonar and mammal problems have been solved. Let's start by asking you, what, what is RIMPAC and what was this? Uh, RIMPAC is an a operation that occurs every two years with uh, the U.S. Navy along with several other nations. Um, the largest one is, uh, is uh, Great Britain. And uh, they work to, uh, to coordinate between countries, you know, how their navies can work together in different ways. Right. So uh, this occurs outside of the waters of Hawaii. And um, it's the largest naval exercise in the world. And we looked at it uh, mostly in terms of their um, uh, use of sonar and the training that, they, that they, uh, they, they go through using their sonar. Yeah, they were apparently were concerned about these, these Korean diesel submarines, which are very quiet apparently. Right, that's the primary um, uh, threat that the sonar is meant to address. Um, so I understand that uh, nuclear submarines are quite noisy, so they're, they're easier to, to detect when they're coming. But uh, the, the quiet diesel engine submarines are considered a, a threat um, uh, that uh, countries like North Korea and Iran uh, possesses. And, um, uh, and, and they're inexpensive too, so they're easier to obtain. Right. And um, so that's what the sonar is designed to, to detect by sending out these powerful sound waves that uh, then, then come back and uh, tell you where something's at. The problem is those sound waves hit mammals, uh, por por porpoises, um, or dolphins, and and also whales, and uh, and they interfere with their with their brains basically. What 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 are the effects of, of these sound waves on these animals? Well, um, you know, this is an issue that's been around for some time, and um, about ten years ago. Uh, it was the Navy had first admitted that their sonar had possibly affected um, a, a group of whales. And what happens is it's extremely loud, even more so underwater. And you're dealing with animals that depend on sound to communicate and find food. So in some cases, it can send out a sort of blanket of sound, forcing them into um, a bay or a cove or something where they can get stranded on a beach. They, uh, it generally confuses animals, so they could uh, move away from feeding areas, and disrupting their, their feeding or their breeding. Um, it could also cause temporary loss of hearing in some animals. And then for one particular whale, uh, the Cuvier's beaked whale, uh, scientists believe that it causes them to repeatedly dive. Uh, and again, sort of forcing this confusion on them. So they're repeatedly diving and it creates this decompression sickness similar to the bends that, uh, that people get and it can, it, can kill, it can kill whales and dolphins. And despite the fact that there's been a lot of whale strandings that environmentalists have pointed to as being caused by sonar, uh, still a lot of the science is, is out on the issue. And um, uh, a lot of that science is conducted by the Navy itself. Is it real That's science or is it junk science just so they can keep doing this sort of thing? Well, I mean, I, th I don't know that anyone's calling it junk science. I think that um, you know, the levels at which there could be conflicts of interest are uh, rather subtle in, in, in this situation. Although there was a study and there's been several that looked at whether conflicts of interest existed and they found that uh, there was a degree of research bias on, uh, on uh, studies that were funded by the Navy. Uh, particularly those that were carried out by the Navy, but less so from those funded by the Navy and carried out by private institutions. Like universities, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, that's still, de it's debatable, but I think among the environmental community, they feel like uh, there is a lot of bias in, in the science. And given that the Navy is funding about half of all marine mammal research globally, um, I think there's a, there's a movement out there to, to make their science more independent. Maybe put those dollars in an independent agency where they could uh, dole it out that right. way. Right. Now, is the Navy actually seeking permission to kill more animals? Because they had permission, I guess, from NOAA to actually right. allow them to kill a certain amount of whales for this, this operation. Right. So the way it works is that uh, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, there's certain exemptions uh, for things like national security and, and training and so forth, uh, as long as there is not a ne there is a negligible impact to the population 
of uh, whatever species that you're talking about. So if it's an endangered species of whales, uh, we're not going to allow it. Well, but, how would they uh, know? We, I mean, would, they, would there be a way for them to know if they were in da- How would they know an endangered whale was even in the area? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell. They, the, all this stuff is, is an es- it's, it's based on estimates and modeling. Um, so there's a large degree of, of, uh, of error there, probably. Um, and, you know, they, they try their best or reportedly try their best to avoid areas where there are endangered species and that sort of thing. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's largely, it's largely an estimate, but uh, they are allowed a certain number of inadvertent kills per year in these training ranges that are carved out uh, across every coast of the United States, including Alaska and the Mariana Islands, where, um, where they have authorization to, do these, to, do, to, to train and test uh, sonar and that they have said will lead to the death of a certain number of, uh, of mammals and harass thousands of them so it could disrupt feeding habits and breeding and stuff like that. As far as whether they're expanding, they are expanding several of the ranges in different ways. So some of them they're expanding the physical boundaries of them and others they're uh, intensifying the amount of training that they're doing. And how exactly, like how many whales and dolphins how many more of them would be killed because of that is is unclear in a lot of these proposals. Um, it's a, it sounds like positive. they don't know. It sounds like they, they really don't know a lot about how, how no, it affects these don't. animals. They really don't. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's I mean that's a that's an underlying issue. And even even the science that uh, you know says how they are affected by the sonar that it's still very limited science. Right. But, uh, Yes, there's a lot. It is true. There's a lot about it that we don't know. Well, anyway, it, it's it was a fascinating story to read and and uh, eye opening in terms of the Navy's attitude on this. In other words, uh, on national security grounds, whales and dolphins will will perish apparently, uh, at least for a while longer. Yeah. Uh, is the environmental community, like NRDC and the other groups, Earth Justice, upset about the Navy's take on this? Uh, do they well, think the Navy is just sort of stalling? Yeah, I mean, they. this is something that they have been, NRDC in particular, has been fighting for uh, about 10 years. And at this point, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the aspects of this issue are kind of in a holding pattern, is my, my take on it. Um, in uh, 2008, there was a Supreme Court, court ruling based on a case in California, and uh, that, that uh, had thrown out some increased, uh, mitigation steps that were imposed by uh, lower courts in California. And at this point, uh, NOAA, NRDC, and the Navy are involved in negotiations that could result in uh, uh, I- increased measures by the Navy to, to limit their impact. Um, but uh, some folks I talked to who were involved in previous negotiations that were very similar to this, that went on for three years, that ended in 2006, they don't hold very much hope for for the for these talks, uh, because you know the, this is an issue that's been around for a long time, and, and there really hasn't been a whole lot of changes right uh, that have come easily. You know, almost all the changes have come from lawsuits. Now, the whole issue of of sea noise, uh, this background noise in the ocean increasing, is getting to be a serious problem, I guess. Right, and you know it's important to put this in perspective. Uh, sound affects marine mammals in general and the oceans are getting increasingly louder uh, every decade for the, for the past hundred years the, the noise has doubled and a lot of that mostly is from uh, cargo container ships uh, the engine noise it also comes from uh, oil drilling and most of the exploration for oil drilling with the, the guns and, and air guns and things that they use um, I, you know so this is this is one piece of an overall issue of ocean noise that's what I've been told is getting more attention particularly at the UN um, with, the, with the IMO and so forth and uh, the Navy in that process is lobbying very hard not to include noise as an ocean pollutant. It's very interesting I think because you don't think of noise as being a, a pollutant. That really is interesting. So the, labies, the Navy is lobbying against including that as a listed pollutant. Right, right. Boy. So this comes up at a conference at the UN every year, and there's uh, a lot of advocates that have been working to make that 
an issue. As soon as you label that a pollutant, then you can go ahead and regulate it. Well, stay on top of this for us. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dave. Okay, thanks, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye.